Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Beer Garden, where we're going to go to Sha Tin for Sunday's races. We have a incredible card coming up. And with me, we have Steve and we have Shireen. And unfortunately, Joe is unable to join us today. But lucky enough, we do have his picks to be given you. Um, but before we get into it, because we will be covering uh, races seven and eight with race seven being on the all weather track. I want to ask you guys, how do you handicap um, an all-weather track, dirt track versus a turf track? Steve, what do you look for in the form? I pretty much um, keep the same kind of thought process, the same sort of handicapping rules, the same. I look at the pedigree where the horse will be suited by it. And the usual staples that I always follow, which is a stable form, jockey form, etc. And And I also think it's... It's dangerous sometimes to sort of pigeonhole a horse that maybe that, that you might think won't like dirt. I've seen many times on the all weather in Britain and Wolverhampton or Lingfield where a horse has run 35 races on turf and then belatedly um, has a first run on, on um, Tapita and actually wins. So I always think it's, 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 it's dangerous to say, no, that's not going to win. You know, they, they would have tried it by now. If it had, if it was going to like it, but I, but I think, I think sometimes you just have to um, go there with an open mind. That's how I, I, I generally frame the handicaps and the, the horses in the same way as I would do on the on the green stuff. Oh, great, Shireen, what do you look for? Yeah, uh, I would say that uh, the all weather track in Hong Kong is easier to handle comparing with uh, some uh, like uh, the sand or the dirt surfaces from uh, in the other countries. Uh, it is because over the all weather track there is not many kickback uh, here, and however, it is always uh, favorable for the front runners, especially for the leaders. Uh, there are only three distances for the all weather all weather track in Hong Kong: twelve hundred meters, uh, over a mile, and eighteen hundred meters. Among all these three distances of front runners are always favorable and for me when I'm studying the all weather form I'm also looking at uh, the barrier draw because uh, especially over the mile uh, wide draw will be a disadvantage because uh, right after the gates open there is a turn just uh, right after the gates open so maybe the horses from inside gate especially for those have uh, some good early speed that would be favorable over the all weather track so for me to looking for for the all weather horses, the gates is one of the main uh, important concern, and the other one is the uh, racing tactic for the horses. Usually, front runner will be more favorable in Hong Kong. Oh wow, great! I know here in the in the states, it's it's difficult. You know, for example, we um, we have a bunch of stakes races coming up at San Anita on Saturday, and there is a turf race. Which um, and it's a fairly large field. It's about twelve horses, um, but a lot of them have not tried the turf out. Or excuse me, yeah, the turf. So it's, you know, what I typically look for, I look at the pedigree um, and see, is it, does it lean, you know, more favor for, for turf? And if it is turf, are they routes or are they sprints? Um, and then really just like, have they, have they tried it out? Some horses haven't tried it out. So you really just don't know how they're going to take to the turf. Um, and I know at least here, our, our dirt track at Santa Anita is, is pretty deep. Um, so really, when you, you transfer over to the turf, sometimes you don't see that big of a transfer and it's not that that um, big of a deal. Um, so I, you know, kind of a lot of what both of you have said is, is what I look at is, you know, the, the draws are always, of course, important um, pedigree. And if that horse even has past performances to really judge it by, um, because there's sometimes when you think a horse is going to run well and the horse just hates the dirt. They just don't like getting dirt in their face, which we've seen that in a, in a few horses we follow. They, they're a little bit of divas. They don't want to get dirty. So um, when you think they're going to run great on a dirt track, they, they don't. So it is, is a bit tough. Um, but I know at least here in the States, our, our dirt surfaces are different uh, throughout the country. You have some that are deep, some that aren't. Um, so and our turf courses, you know, here we have a downhill turf course, which is pretty exciting. Um, but it, it's a little similar to overseas tracks where you have the undulations. It's not just a straight downhill and a curve. So it's, that's pretty neat. To, and then we always get excited to see when a horse transfer over there to run down the hill. So we, we have that this weekend. So it'll be pretty exciting. But those are a lot of the main things I look for. But let's get into 
We're going to start with race seven, which is the Namshan Handicap, a class three, 1800 meters or nine furlongs. Uh, and we'll get right into it. Steve, who do you like in this race? Well, I took a bit of a mini chance with number eight, King's Capital, also drawn eight. The race is pretty much a, a, almost like a replica of the race that Turin Red Star won last month. No less than eight of the horses that ran there are running in this race. Turin Red Star won. There was King's Capital in third. It was only his second try on dirt, but I thought it was really a good run. The first time he ran, it was a, a middling sort of mid-division effort. The second time, far, far better, staying on very well on the outside under Antoine Hamelin, who's a among the winners again. Nice to see him um, in better form. So um, Antoine Hamelin keeps the ride. So yes, King Capital for me, I think it's a very interesting race. And of course, he's the son of Animal Kingdom, who won the Dubai World Cup in 2013. And he likes a bit of dirt. So hopefully that bodes well for King's Capital. I thought it was a very interesting race, though. I mean, as I say, eight of those are running again. And even Chan Cheng Prince, who finished ninth, I thought was an interesting horse. He was He pulled hard. Um, the last time, but he still had a chance turning in under Ruin Maya and then Magnificent sort of leaned in and that was the end of Chan Cheng Prince. It's interesting to see Zach Purton on board for the first time. And I was thinking, mm, shall I go for, shall I go for, um, because sometimes King's Capital are fast finishing third and you expect them to build on that and they don't. But, you know, logically, he should. So I decided to go for King's Capital. It's a nice draw. He's still unexposed on the dirt, so I'll go for him. Yeah, King's Capital, the eight here, is looking really great. I think the barrier draw really falls in his favor. He's stretching out, but he's just been showing some great form here. And he really has that good gear that he switches into in the stretch. I just think maybe he needs to switch into it um, a little bit uh, earlier than we, we've seen him. I think he's going to be a really impressive rate. And Steve, you're right. We're seeing a lot of familiar company here, a lot of familiar competition. And Shireen, who do you like here? Yeah, in race seven, I think that there is quite an open field because among the field of 13, eight of them will be all, uh, racing over this trip for the first time. So I may go for the last time winner, number six, Crossford. He is trained by John Size, who is uh, recently having quite a good result in the middle of the season. Uh, this last time winner, uh, over a mile on the turf, he showed uh, the fastest final session on, and he won by more than a length last time out. And Crossford will be uh, going back to the all-weather track where he has finished close here before. And then this time up to 1800 meters will be also suitable for him. And then this time Wagner Bojans will be on board again. This time he will just carry 119 pounds, uh, which is uh, just three, three pounds uh, heavier than last start. So I think that it should be okay for him to fight for a back-to-back -back winner. So I will go for number six, Crossford. Crossford is looking really great. That when uh, I, I strongly suggest everybody to go rewatch that replay on January 22nd if you didn't catch the race live. Amazing. He was unbelievable on this track. Uh, I like the 10 here, Party Every Day. He's just an interesting horse. He has one at this distance on the all-weather track. He does get a, a bit of a weight break, um, which I think is really going to help him out. And, and like you know, both Shireen and Steve have mentioned, it's another horse that's racing and a lot of familiar company. Um, with Tra Chadwick staying aboard, I really like that. It just, I watched some of the replays and it really just shows that Chadwick kind of is getting really familiar with how to maneuver this horse and place him where this horse is going to perform best at. So, uh, 10 party every day is my choice. Jumping out of barrier nine. And now with Joe, Joe picked the seven here, exceptional, nice with Ho aboard. He is dropping in distance from his last run where he got second. Another horse that just has really shown some great form coming, you know, out of last year. He's going to be running, you know, this 1,800 meters, which I think is going to suit him quite well. They tried him at 2,200 meters, um, in which he got a second place finish, a really lovely finish, um, honestly. So it'll be interesting to see how he does with that, that drop. He's just, I think this horse kind of suffers a little bit from seconditis. Um, so hoping we can break that and get Joe a win here in race seven. So to recap race seven, we have Steve with the eight Kings capital Shireen with six Crossford. I have the 10 party every day and Joe has the seven exceptional nice. Let's go on to race eight, which is the Lycoke class three handicap 1600 meters or eight furlongs. 
Steve, who, do you, who are you liking here? Took a chance. He was Storm Legend, um, an ex-Irish horse. He's had two runs in two local runs in Hong Kong. He got no run whatsoever the first time. That was behind Navas 2 and Packing Victory, who are both um, Packing Navas 2 won again and Packing Victory then won next time. And things didn't pan out um, well last time either behind Crossford. He's been dropped two pounds for that, which is quite generous. And I think he's an each way alternative to the likes of the hat trick seeking pair of Soulmate and Sight Spirit. Soulmate is up eight pounds and Sight Spirit is up £11. The handicapper hasn't missed them, you could say. But they do have chances. But I do think that Storm Legend is an interesting proposition under Harry Bentley, of course, who really is starting to find his stride in Hong Kong. Yes, the sixth Storm Legend, you're right. <clears throat> Harry Bentley has just been proven to, to be a really strong jockey here in uh, Hong Kong. I do, I do agree with you, Steve, that the drop in weight is really going to help out. They are adding a tongue tie to this horse, so hopefully that'll kind of help with whatever issues he might have had distracting him from really performing at his best. Shireen, who are you liking here? Yeah, here I'm keen on number three, Captain Wayne. It was really impressive to me last time out because at that time, Somei was the only leader at a very, very slow pace and then he won it. However, Captain Wayne was at a very back, but uh, he could still finish fourth. I would think, I thought that uh, it was uh, nearly impossible to chase well under such a slow pace, but Captain Wayne did it quite well. And it also showed that uh, this horse is suitable over a mile. So this time racing over this distance again, he will finish face uh, Somei again, but this time Somei will be ridden by Alpha Tran, so maybe the pace will not be that slow just like last time out, so maybe that would be more favorable for Captain Wim. And then he, uh, this time Zach Purden takes the rise again, and he is also what, uh, the winning partner of this horse before, so I think that uh, Captain Wynn with Zach Porton on board still racing over a mile this time again. It, was a, it is a good chance for him to win again, so I'm keen on number three, Captain Wim. Yes, I agree. The three captain win with Purton back. I think Purton and this horse are possibly lethal in this in this race. A great horse. Uh, you know, you, like you said, it was that last pace in the, the race for Soulmate won. It was just oddly slow, but it was really great to see Captain Win perform as well as he did and, and really get that nice fourth place finish. Um, and a great trial run that he just had at Sha, at, uh, Sha Tin. So great to see Purton back, of course. And I think he's going to put up a quite a good fight there with the three. Now, I like the one. I'm taking Soulmate. I was a little – I struggled with this field. I thought this race was one of the hardest to handicap. Um, and especially, I like Soulmate, but I was really questioning, like, oof, we're not getting Marrera in the irons. Um so it's keeping our fingers crossed. That's not going to kind of kind of deter this horse from performing as it has been. He's jumping from barrier six, which I think is perfect for him. If he gets loose, he's going to lead the field. He's just been showing some great form, um, not setting the best fractions as far as as times, but he still seems to just kind of kick into gear when it needs to be. So I like Soulmate here. Um, like I said, my only concern here is with Marrera not aboard, who Marrera really was showing that he was getting to know this horse and driving this horse to its strong performances. So we will see here. Um, and Joe, Joe likes the four here, Rise Breathing with Alexi Bedell aboard, which is great. He's jumping from barrier two. This is another horse that just was progressing very nicely at the end of last year. And I think he's, we're looking to see this horse have a very strong three-year-old career. Um, he just had a little bit of an unlucky ending uh, with Sha Tin in the early December. You know, getting a fourth place finish to, to Beauty Joy, he just, just did not have the best trip. It was a good fourth place finish though. Um, and then coming to the 1600 meter, uh, earlier, excuse me, in January 22nd, getting that third place finish. I think this is really a great horse to throw into this field. Like I said, I think there's a lot of options with this race. This was a really tough race and a lot of cases can be made for these horses. So to recap, Steve has the six storm legend, Shireen, the three with captain win. I have the one soulmate and Joe comes in with the four with rise breathing. So let's go to our best bets powered by race quant. Steve, who is your best bet for the race? 
I went to race number five, and it's number four on point, and he's in gate number four. I think this is a very nice horse. He's a likely race son of Hallowed Crown, trained by Frankie Law, and he had lots of, showed an abundance of promise, I think, on his first run under Zach Purton. It's a great run, finished third from barrier 12, which isn't easy. And then I picked him next time. You know when you pick a horse, but you have a nagging doubt, and I had that nagging doubt. And I think, should I pick Country Boy? Well, actually, I, I stuck with On Point, and On Point was fourth. Country Boy was second. And On Point, he wasn't disgraced by any means. But I think this is his time now. He's been a, be beaten, a, a beaten favourite both times. He's a very handsome horse, lots of potential. And if you look, he's actually got a rather similar profile to the John Size trained sight spirit. He was also a beaten favourite on his first two runs, tried at 1,200 metres, or, you know, a mix between maybe just things happening too quickly and also a bit of greenness. And then on the third run, boom, up to 1,400 metres, they were in. And, of course, Sight Spirit has now won his last two, heading for the hat-trick in race number eight. So, yes, I'm hoping that um, Joe Moreira, of course, as well, can be the catalyst for um, On Point. And it wouldn't be, it wouldn't, I don't think it's the most um, competitive race. I kind of looked at him and I looked at Joyful Genius. And I think Joyful Genius is the kind of horse that, if he's ever going to catch On Point, it's now. Because I think, on, I think Joyful Genius is um, consistent, but I don't think he's progressive. I think he'll just um, monkey around in the 50s, whereas I think On Point could get higher and higher. So I think this is um, On Point's um, chance to be caught, but I don't think he will. And it wouldn't surprise me if he won decisively um, on Sunday. I agree. On Point, I'm, I'm hoping On Point, you know, trying the, uh, this, this distance out is really going to help him, really going to shine. But you're right, it's... it's uh, this horse is just, I, I think that this 1400 meters is where this horse is going to perform best at. So I'm excited to see how, how on point does the four on point in race five. Shireen, who is your best bet powered by race clan? Yeah, my best bet on Sunday at Shatin will be in race three, the class four race over a mile on the all-weather track. My best bet is number eight, Winmore Star. Because last start, uh, Winmore Star raced over the all-weather track for the first time and he finished quite well. He jumped fast and then stayed behind the leaders and then he ran second behind All Joyful. And on Sunday, Winmore Star will face All Joyful again this time. But uh, among, uh, between these two horses, the race difference will be 11 pounds. So so Wimbo Star still uh, jumping from a good gate on Sunday, jump from gate two with Ruan Meyer on board. Which, uh, this truck is, is having really good results over the over track in this season in Hong Kong. So I will go for Wimbo Star and I think that he is able to turn the table on Sunday. I agree, Shireen. I think he is going to turn the table. Wimbo Star, you're right, he's just shown some good form on the all-weather track. So excited to see him trying to Keep it here at the 1650 back on the all weather. I think he's going to do great. I think the barrier draw fits him perfectly here to set him up for a really strong performance. Uh, my best bet powered by race grant comes in race 10, the Hoyla handicap class three uh, going over seven furlongs. I'm going with the two lucky with you with Teton aboard looking for his fourth consecutive win. Jumping up that extra 200 meters, I don't think it's going to be a problem. He's just a horse that has proven to have exceptional form on the Shaw 10 track. Uh, my biggest concern in this race could be a romantic warrior, um, but I do feel like the form that Lucky, ha Lucky With You has been showing lately and really just re-watching his progression from last year now coming into such a strong campaign this year, I think it's going to be a really really great race to watch so i am with the two lucky with you and race 10. now joe had his best bet his came in and race to the pockton handicap class four over six furlongs he took eight golden empire he's going up in weight he made a really strong debut last time out getting a third place finish a really nice third place finish He's jumping from barrier 12, which I feel like favors this horse quite a bit. And there's another horse that the barrier draw just sets him up perfectly for a nice, a nice race uh, for his second time out at Shatin um, racing. So I think Joe has a really good horse here. This is a strong field, but I do feel like Golden Empire shows a lot of promise um, and could really come in. We have Perton aboard, um, which is another Jackie. You really can't go wrong with, and I think Perton's really going to set him up for a nice, nice trip.
So let's go on to our value bets of the, the, the night. So Steve, who's your value bet? Well, I went back to race eight, number six, Storm Legend. Uh, I just thought he had a very good each way opportunity here, certainly to place. He was a winner at Nace in his native Ireland, over 1,400 metres. And his trainer at the time, Fozzie Stack, was of the opinion that um, 1,600 metres would suit him better. So that's a, a nice pointer to his chances. Sarah, you were just saying that I think we've covered every single race apart from race one. And I feel, I feel bad that I've actually included my, um, my, my value bet as one of the sort of the horses, the races that we cover. So I'll just quickly mention race number one, which is El Valiente, which I've actually put up in my blog that I do each week. El Valiente, he's an 18 race maiden, but he, he, he much prefers the dirt surface, which he's on on Sunday. He's uh, nothing from 13 on dirt, but he's a top four finisher seven times. And it's, it's interesting. Casper Ferns, leading trainer, he's persevering with it. Um, Joe Moreira's coming back for a third try on the horse. He's a, there are some, there are some long-standing maidens that you would just um, avoid at all costs, but El Valiente is not one of them. He's a good horse. He tries his best, and you know yourself, these these double-figure fields, they're just very hard to win. The competitive handicaps from from you know class two through to class five are very difficult. So for me, um, as another another um, value bet, certainly would be El Valiente in race one. But the one I wrote down is in race eight, Storm Legend. Perfect. Well, there we go. We have you covered races one through 10. We got you. Don't worry. So that's great, Steve. Thank you. I think Storm Legend right now is looking about $17, at least in the Australian market. Um, Shireen, who do you like for your value bet? Uh, for my value bet, let me cover uh, race six, the class four over a mile. Because here, there are eight horses in the field uh, will race over this trip for the first time. So I think that, that it would be quite a good chance for me to find an outsider here. So I go for number 11, ring bells in race six. Uh, this horse will up to this course and distance for the first time. And I think that it should be the best distance for him uh, for this redwood gelding. Uh, because on his, his pedigree, he should have uh, enough stamina to handled over a mile and over his three starts before his average beaten margin is just around three lengths i think it is all good not really bad and also indicating that uh, ring bells is looking for a longer distance so before this race he is doing quite well during the track work with some intensive gallops alex badell will be uh, on board for the first time and then he will jump from gate four he can just sit behind the leader because in race six i think that there is not much pace in this race so it may be favorable for wing bells to sit in a good position so my value bet in race six number 11 ring bells yes ring bells is i think set up perfectly in this field um with alexi bedell i agree i think he is going to trail the leader and just wait uh, for that leading horse i, I don't think is going to have great pace so he's going to pick up the pieces i think that's a great great horse to pick right now in the australian market his value is 22 dollars and 10 so my value bet of the day comes in at race nine, going six furlongs. Uh, this was a tough race as well, but I'm taking the one here trillion win uh, with Bedell in the, in the irons. In the Australian market, he's looking at uh, 1680, but he's drawn perfectly for this, this field. <clears throat> he's coming up against tough competition, which he's seen before, fantastic way in California. Spangle. He had a close finish to Fantastic Way. He's he's coming in the heaviest weight in this field. So we'll see how that really pans out. But I do feel like he's going to put up a great fight here. He's he's proven in tough competition. So we really see this horse trailing behind the leader um, and then just waiting to make his move and pick up the pieces for when that that pace melts down a little bit coming into the stretch. So best my value bet is in race nine. Number one, trillion win. And Joe's best, or excuse me, value bet was came in at race four, eight lightning bolt with Alexi Bedell and the irons as well as making his, his Hong Kong debut after a six month layoff. He's shown some really impressive tra uh, trial barriers uh, runs at Sha Tin. It really looks like he's taken to the, the track quite nicely. I think you're going to get a lot of value because this horse is going to put up a really good, tough competition. And I don't see a lot of the punters um, really probably looking at this horse as much as they probably should here. So it's a great competitive horse. Um, and the Australian market look, is looking like that's $11. So to sum up our value bet, Steve has 
66, Storm Legend in race eight, and also in race one. Uh, Steve, forgive me, what was the horse's number? El Valiente. El Valiente in race one. And Shireen has the 11 ring bells in race six. I have the one trillion win in race nine. And Joe has the eight lightning bolt in race four. So we have you covered with picks from race one to race 10. So hopefully we have a lot of great luck Sunday at SHA 10. I think it's going to be a great day. Tough, tough card of handicapping, honestly. Um, and we have a few great races on that all weather track, which is always fun to watch at SHA 10. So I wish everybody good luck and we'll see you next time.